Hi everyone. It has been a hot minute, uh, but I am back and I'm not sure what the frequency of my videos is going to be, but I just have been, um, I've gotten back into watching booktube a lot and feel like I am missing out and I wanted to be back making videos. So the first video I thought I would do when I came back was just a like what I read in the past couple months and what I am currently reading and what I will be reading in the next couple months. Um, so Arthur Manley Howe was born on January 26th at 11 p.m. and we love him to pieces. So he's 10 weeks old today and he's really sweet. Um, so eventually I'm sure he'll be in a video, but he's sleeping right now and everybody knows that you do not wake a sleeping baby. Uh, so I um, have written down just because of being scatterbrained right now uh, with, you know, sleep being so wonky every night, just depending on what night it is. Uh, so I didn't want to forget. So firstly, the books that I read in the past couple months, uh, the highlights. And the first one is The Cottingly Secret by Hazel Gaynor. This is one I had been wanting to read for a while and I had had it on hold for, I think around six months on Overdrive, but there was, there I think there were like 50 people ahead of me when I put it on hold. So I waited a long time for it and then it ended up just being just the right time uh, when I wanted to, when I wanted to read it. And so, this is based on the Cottingly Fairies, um, which was a really sensational event that happened in the Victorian era where these little girls, um, they, you know, till the day they died, said that they saw fairies uh, in a field. And then when grownups kind of laughed at them, they decided they would make these really realistic looking little paper cutouts of fairies. And they, um, used their uncle's camera and had, uh, you know, over the course of a couple of years, took several pictures with the paper cutout fairies, but lots of people believe they were real fairies, including Arthur Conan Doyle, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle of Sherlock Holmes fame. Um, so it just goes with that legend. And then like many historical fiction novels like to do, it has two parallel storylines from different timelines. Um, so this was just a really fun, escapist, really magical type historical fiction. And the present day storyline involved a bookshop and a bookshop of antique books. So it was really a historical fiction for book lovers. Um, I really recommend it. And it was just a really nice kind of escapist type book to read. Uh, then I had two Agatha Christie kind of fails ones that I didn't enjoy as much unfortunately and they were the next two and the Hercule Poirot series and that is The Big Four and The Mystery of the Blue Train. So I remember uh, Leanne from Literary Diversions talking about The Big Four and how she DNF'd it and so I went in with great trepidation and it turns out that Leanne and I have similar Poirot taste because this was just not my cup of tea. It's this big, grandiose storyline, um, a lot longer timeline than many of the Poirot are. And you know how when you have a series that has kind of a formula that you like, you you don't need it to digress from the formula. If, if it's what you like, then you're fine with kind of pretty much every book uh, just be, being a slight variety on that formula. And like I said, the big four um, is a really long timeline and it involves Poirot traveling a lot and uh, and I just wasn't invested in the mystery and then in addition to that um, I'm seeing I'm like really far away so I'm gonna see if I can move this closer without knocking it down you're stacked up on a bunch of books my tripod broke okay I think that's a little better it just felt very far away um okay so then the next one was the mystery of the blue train and this one had too little of Poirot. That's, you know, he's one of the reasons that I read them. So it took about, I think maybe 60% of the book for him to get there. And um, I just wasn't compelled by many of the characters. This one involves uh, a jewel, a really famous jewel being stolen on a train and the murder of a woman on a train. I do think trains are a great device to use for uh, mystery because, you know, all of these people 
who otherwise wouldn't be in the same space together are using the train. And that is really interesting and it can be done well, but this one just wasn't to my taste. And I think the Moonstone has kind of ruined me for um, a lot of other mysteries where jewels are stolen. Uh, I, I just find kind of the Moonstone as the standard for any jewel mysteries. So again, uh, you know, I didn't really dislike them, but it just wasn't as, as much as some of the other ones that I've enjoyed. Uh, and it was a, a definite come down after reading uh, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Now, I so I've decided I like Poirot either in London or in a small country village and uh, in England. So just for some reason when he travels, um, I guess it takes away from the coziness of it maybe. I don't know what it is exactly. But anyhow, that's how I feel about it. Uh, but then one that I really did enjoy and I read with um, and from Beyond the Pages for our Mary Stewart project this year, and um, Doris from Aldi Books, Brie from Brie Hill, and Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures. Um, we're having so much fun going through all these Mary Stewart, and this one is The Moon Spinners. So um, uh, this was March's pick, and this is way up there now for me. I'm not sure exactly where in the ranking it is, but this one um, was one that uh, just like Nine Coaches Waiting and Madame Will You Talk, this one hit the ground running, which I had missed. I have enjoyed the other Mary Stewart's, but I really like one that I don't really have to work at it to, you know, to get into it. Um, and this is in Crete, and uh, Nicola Ferris is the main character, and she finds this man who has been shot, the very, like, first chapter, um, and ends up getting caught up in this, you know, plot and of, you know, who are the people that shot him and she's trying to to help them keep him safe and figure out exactly who is the villain in this little small town this sleepy little uh you know mediterranean town that she's staying in and it was just such a page turner um and then the opening sentence what was the opening sentence again um oh well the opening sentence wasn't quite as exciting as i thought it was going to be but it just really did hit the ground running. Uh, now, also, I will say, too, the really, really vivid descriptions of the landscape in this. And uh, just lovely. Just lovely. Um, okay, then, if any of you have been watching me since October of 2017, you'll know that I did a uh, Victober Top 5 TBR predictions video. So I am making my way through those. There are 15 on the list. And my goal is actually, I'm really excited about this, to have all 15 read by October 2018. Uh, so, you know, later on this year. And, but I picked such a chunker to start with off the list, and that is Armadale. Um, so this is one that I started in November and I finished it, I think, two weeks ago. And this one just took me a while to finish. So I actually am not going to give any of my thoughts on these. I know that's like such a tease, but I just think it'd be super fun to have all of the results in one video in honor of Victober. So I'll be saving all my thoughts I have on that. So then the next one on the list that I will be reading is uh, Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. And this one seems like it's going to be very funny. It's about these three men traveling down the Thames River. Um, and it's just their travels. And it's just supposed to be hysterical. So I'm really looking forward to it, especially because I'm going to be reading it aloud with my husband. We're going to alternate chapters. But we used to do that a lot and then this is one book that I think he would genuinely enjoy and so we'll be reading it together. Um, then one audiobook that was uh, I just spontaneously checked it out and it ended up being such a treat and that is Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carriger. So I know most people when they read her books they start out with the Parasol Protectorate series but I went into this one not realizing this was a prequel series that had been written afterwards um, and now I think I'm happy reading that because I think I'll enjoy the Parasol Protectorate series even more, but I'm really enjoying this for now, so I'm fine with that. So I have Curtsies and Conspiracies checked out, um, and so hopefully I'll be able to get to that soon. 
And uh, in case you don't know, this this series is a finishing school series, and it's so this it's you know got this it's under the guise of like a finishing school for ladies in Victorian society, um, but this is like a steampunk setting. So there's lots of interesting technology in the school, and there's also um, it is not your typical finishing school. It, they are there to be um, assassins. Uh, and and spies that that type of thing. So it's really super fun because the humor is just very ironic. Um, they want them to act refined and like ladies, all while doing, um, you know, kind of the dirty work that the government needs them to do. And uh, the female friendship in this just checked another box for me. So I I wanted something really fun, but a lot of contemporary YA I just can't get into. But I have decided YA fantasy is just like the audiobooks are just so wonderful to listen to. Um, and I am realizing that uh, I think I know what I like, and it's YA fantasy, mysteries, and um, classics, modern classics and Victorian literature. So that's what I'm just sticking with this year, I think. I don't, I don't know how much I'll branch out. Um, then another that I am currently reading is Sparkling Cyanide by Agatha Christie. So um, for the Instagram challenge I'm doing this year, which I need to keep documenting it, uh, one of the challenges is read a book with poison uh, or with a murder weapon on the cover. And so I saw just the cover of Sparkling Cyanide and I thought, oh, I want to read that. I thought it was in the Poirot series, but I was mistaken. But it is so much fun. And um, I'm really pleased because, like I said, the last two Agatha Christie that I read, I didn't enjoy as much. So it's really nice to get into a one that makes me think like, oh, yeah, I do really enjoy a lot of her books. Uh, so this one, is, um, there is a woman who at a dinner party um, uh, is poisoned by cyanide. And a lot of people think it's suicide. But now you're looking back like a year later and you're going through the minds of all the different characters and it's looking more and more of course like it wasn't a suicide so just very uh engaging and uh like most Agatha Christie I have no idea who done it um I'm not usually able to guess with her uh okay then also on the go Middle March by George Eliot Stephanie from That's What She Read and I have been reading this and it has been a journey. So I um, I don't know exactly what our goal was. Oh, I love how you can see the gold foil shining. I just love that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what our goal was for like how soon we would read this, but um, it's been really nice because we've kind of, uh, it both took us a while to build momentum with this. And now we are both kind of really, really into it at the same time. Um, which is such a treat. So yeah, just really, um, I was hoping I would enjoy this more the second time around and I am enjoying this more the second time around. I think it has, um, so many observations, so many poignant observations just for life in general. And it shows so much of like, um, the real failings that real people have. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased that I decided to reread it because uh, I thought, like I said, I would enjoy it more the second time around. Um, I'm finding it, the reading is coming easier. It took about 200 pages, but now it is coming easier. Uh, yeah, so I'm also interested in the same storylines that I was before. Stephanie and I were saying there were a couple that we weren't as interested in, but for the most part, most of it is really interesting us. So I do not have much left. Um, I am on... I think page 630 out of 780. Uh, so that's around 150 pages left. So when you're reading a tone like Middlemarch, that does not feel like a lot at all. So I'm trying this weekend, actually. I have five hours of audiobook. I've been reading it exclusively through audiobook. Um, five hours left of audiobook. And then I'm really excited because Anne from Beyond the Pages and I have decided we're going to read through the Pallisers series by Anthony Trollope. Now I have not finished the Barsetshire Chronicles um, by Anthony Trollope, but I it was just too tempting to get to go through the Pallisers series with Anne. 
So I will later on in the summer. I'm really excited. I'll be reading The Small House at Allingham with uh, Doris from Aldi Books. Uh, and so I'm just going to start these now and go through them via audiobook. And uh, starting in April, the catalyst was Steve Donahue hosting a read along of Can You Forgive Her? So um, I will be, we will be starting in April, but I asked Anne, you know, what speed she was wanting to do it. And she was, you know, wanting to do it kind of slower. And I said, great, that works for me just because, you know, my reading time is somewhat limited and I don't want to, um, I don't want to monopolize like all of my reading for the next few months. So we're just going to do, you know, several chapters a day and I'm really looking forward to it because I love Anthony Trollope's writing and, you know, I want to get to all of his stuff eventually. So it will just be really great. Um, then the Mary Stewart pick for April, that's the book that it is, for April is Thorny Hold. Um, I didn't even know the plot of this one before Ange talked about it in her, um, uh, goodness, in her April TBR video, and it just sounds really fun. There's a cottage that has a reputation for magic and a resident black cat, which makes Doris very happy. So yes, I think this will be um, just, you know, yet another uh, fun one to read. And this, we, the group has expanded greatly. So it's also going to be Leah, Leah, I'm so sorry, I can't remember your channel name. And then Sean from Sean the Book Maniac. And then Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings, which is really fun because I've never done a buddy read with her. And Brie from Brie Help. So, uh, I am just really looking forward to this. And then this one is a shorter one because it is 260 pages, whereas the other ones we've been reading are closer to 500. Um, Moon Spinners. Oh no, Moon Spinners is only like 400 pages. Anyhow. Uh, then one I started briefly, but physical books are a lot harder for me to make time for. I've just been doing so much reading on my phone. It's just the most convenient for holding and everything. But I did start and I'm really enjoying um, The Monster in the Box by Ruth Rendell. Uh, 50 pages into it. So this is a really interesting plot already. Um, Inspector Wexford, who is the you know main detective in this series, uh, found out about there was a crime that happened years ago and he just had this gut feeling that this one man had committed the crime, but he had nothing on the guy. He couldn't prove it. And now um, the man who he thought has done it has returned to uh, the local community and Wexford is uh, convinced that he needs to look into this case again and prove him wrong from this case from years ago. Um, and then uh, one that I'd like to get to soon, but is a physical book, so we'll see how soon I get to it. But this is the new series. I was just browsing in a used bookstore and happened upon this. This is um, The Charlie Chan Mysteries by Earl Dare Biggers. This is a golden age mystery. You can tell by the cover. Um, the House Without a Key. Uh, so this is um, a Chinese detective in the Honolulu Police Department. And so this is really cool because it says it was written in 1925 um, and he helps out this family who live in a mansion on Waikiki Beach. And it's really cool because it shows a like positive portrayal of someone of a minority. And um, just really neat, especially, you know, for that era. And uh, so I was really interested, you know, in a detective series with a Chinese detective. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll let you know, you know, if I like it and hopefully I do. And then uh, let's see, two others that I'm currently read or one that I'm currently reading. I'm still reading Elizabeth Gaskell's letters. Uh, still making my way through that, but that book is so heavy, so heavy. Um, and then I received from the lovely Kate from the novel Nomad. I received The Beast Garden uh, by Kate Forsyth. It's a historical fiction kind of fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast and it just looks wonderful. So I do hope to get to that sooner rather than later. Um, so I am like, a, you know, I don't have quite as much reading time as I used to, but I'm really pleased that I'm just, 
I figured out, like I said, that I really like um, YA fantasy, mysteries, and Victorian literature, and if I and modern classics, and if I kind of stay in those zones, then I keep ending up finding books that I really enjoy. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the update, and I, like I said, I have no idea what my filming schedule will be, but I will be back, you know, sometime, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what my next video will be. I do think I want to do a um, Kate Recommends Mysteries series and just do different categories like historical mysteries, Victorian, um, hard-boiled, cozy, you know, you get, you get the draw. So yeah, those are the things I'm planning on doing soon, and I'll see you guys for another video. Bye!